Good morning, folks. If you missed last night's cosmic ray factor, I'm going to tack it on the end of this video. The solar shutdown cannot be ignored. There is a new comet Lovejoy. The astronomer's fourth discovered comet will share his name and the morning skies with comet Ison and P2 Enki here soon. Not so near to them visually, but more northward in the sky around that same pre-sunrise time. Now as Ison swings behind the sun and heads up to be atop Earth's North Pole for New Year's, Lovejoy will remain on the night side of the sky. Something interesting though, given that my own words claim the top Ison worry is not a solar flare or electric discharge, but debris left in Earth's orbit when it intersects only 75 days earlier. One might guess. I'm also worried about debris here as we appear to be trailing the newly discovered comet Lovejoy, but alas, perspective. Looking down from above as I just was, belies just how angled Lovejoy's orbit really is. Terrific article about sprites and terrestrial gamma flashes includes a video. We've seen amazing images of these things recently, as recently as August 8th, 2013 in the news almost a year after another mention. New Electric Universe students should compare these to an Earth version of a solar flare. Umberto in the East Pacific, gaining form and strength in her course becomes more certain. Gabrielle is heading north on a long journey, while Mexico should turn an eye to the east porque aquí viene otra tormenta. Also got development southwest of Hawaii, it's headed away. Last time we came here, it was to show a decade record cold wave west. Not a ton has changed pressure-wise, but the southern low pulls clockwise, which matches the counterclockwise red high to the right, where they meet in the middle. Both yank south from the tropics to now produce a heat wave. Last night's news ended with the filament ripping away from the southeastern limb of the sun. It will mostly miss Earth. Anything headed our way is occluded behind the center disk blocking the sun's glare, but the endless spiral suggests we could actually see a glancing blow. The speediest particles of this moderate CME will miss Earth. Something not missing, however, is the coronal hole stream. We actually had two density spikes as the speed ramp for this coronal hole. This is likely due to the fact that there were two holes. Looking back a few days reveals the North Polar Extension with a confined, smaller opening trailing behind him. Two days late means it's weak, no disturbance, not too fast, just moderate testing of our magnetic shield. But of course, any proton spikes do take large cuts at the electron flux. Magnetic connectivity. Earth is top right. Mercury is very hard to see on the bottom left there. We have no solar flares at all, at least we are seeing a few sunspots, they need more time to develop. Coronal hole facing Earth today, with green incoming behind it. That's yet another coronal hole. When these umbral magnetics weaken on the sun, the coronal holes come in spades. They have all been weak so far and we've had no quaking, but the power appears to be turning already via ISWA. We all hold the watch at 6 to 7 with plasma filaments to close, but don't go anywhere if you haven't seen the cosmic ray factor of a solar magnetic shutdown. Bit of review and clarification on the Agenda 21 Counter-Strike about to come. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.55 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone. Focal point is cosmic rays. If true... This news strengthens the arguments for cosmic climate forcing, especially given that Earth's magnetic shield is weakening according to every official source. I say, if true, because I have previously examined the arguments on both sides of this. Even among the leaders in the field, there's much disagreement on cosmic rays and clouds. But a point where everyone is on the same page is this. Solar activity and strong magnetic fields associated with it block galactic radiation. This is an old University of Delaware page, but it's perfect for this example. Up top we have solar cycles, high activity means strong fields and emissions, and when that magnetic shield weakens during solar minimum, the cosmic rays below penetrate much more. Even comparing cycle to cycle, look how much stronger one cycle is than another and how much more the cosmic rays plummeted during the stronger solar activity. This correlation is incontrovertible. Bit of review, Earth's magnetic shield has a partner in failure, and his cohort is our star. When two National Solar Observatory physicists suggested our next cycle could have no sunspots, many ignored it, but the pattern and indicators of a magnetic shutdown cycle to cycle, like the Dalton or even mini Maunder-like minima, is now also incontrovertible. We are at the point of a solar pole flip now, the cycle is almost peaked. It is in progress, so to speak. We know the southern pole flipped in 2012 right there, and 
If it is any indication of what's coming, the weakening will continue. While the north is on the southern side right now, it does appear to be headed back up and therefore not yet completely flipped. What would erasing that delicate cosmic ray balance on Earth do to our climate? I'm not sure. But with Earth's field weakening 10% since the 19th century, we are seeing two shields fade, with one of them, the more important one for cosmic rays, potentially going on hiatus for a while. I find it odd that cosmic rays are not a greater focal point in mainstream climate science. This doesn't belong hidden in paid journals, occasionally summarized on science pages days to weeks later. This is what everyone should know.